Hey everyone, Vladimir is here with our multi-platform game development tutorial part 27. So in the previous lesson we've actually finished our game and today it's the time wherein we start thinking about Android as a platform. So as you can understand the Android has no keyboard in a classical sense and we are not able to catch users actions by simple arrow key presses. So we're going to fix this today by introducing the on-screen buttons that move the player. Without further ado, let me switch to my desktop. And first thing that we are going to do, I've actually prepared four buttons. I've uploaded them to repository so you can use them freely. And um, we are actually going to declare them and load them in our resources. So let me create a new regions. Mm, left arrow button and then the same thing with right arrow button up arrow button and down arrow button so those arrows buttons are going to be on the both sides of the screen uh, I think up and down on the left side left and right on the right side and the player will be able to touch them with his fingers simple think about the joystick something like that and to do this we're going to up upload them to our program first we need to find them right so I'm just finding the region of left arrow then doing the same for the other ones um. let me zoom it in in case you cannot see this well all right so after loading those regions, it's time to go to our game screen. And you know, it makes sense to show those buttons at the start of the game, but once player loses, there's no use of those buttons, so we want to hide them effectively. To do this, we will introduce a special structure called group, which is already implemented in libgdx, and it helps you to, well, by as the name suggests, to group the elements. So it's private group control group. It will be used to add the buttons onto it. And then after the buttons are added, you can simply show or hide them by addressing the control group fu functions. So what we're going to do first, we need to, in our constructor, let's initialize our control group. It's simple new group then our game stage should add our mm, control group and then if our application type is android we need to prepare direction buttons and the thing is all those four direction buttons are pretty much the same uh, the different thing about them is um, the direction that they those buttons are moving i mean where the player moves so all buttons move the player but everyone has this different direction and different position on screen if that matters much so i'm just going to create prepare direction buttons function and i'm also going to pre create the prepare individual direction button function which will take um we need let me see the change of coordinates on the button click uh, then we need to know the image of the button of course and then we need to know the position of the button let me just move it so it just positions smoothly in our function all right after that uh, the code is pretty simple we create a new image button by passing the image to it uh, then we set the position of our image button to the one that we have passed to the function, right? And then we just add the listener to our button. A new click listener. A new click listener which attempts to move, right? There was a function attempt move.
and it attempts to move by the x, the x and the y. Uh, oh right, we need to override the method, right? We need to override the touch up method. Public void touch up input event event float y pointer button and don't we have this method because we have a typo in the method okay let me just rename the method rename the method so we have the proper name refactor rename and name it attempt move great after that the function should be working fine uh, the only thing that you need to add is the super call otherwise the function will not the button will not be marked as released and we definitely don't want that and then we just need to add our button to our control group so if you run the game now but make sure to comment out the line with the get type because we're still testing on desktop right so check the desktop first run the game uh, you will see that prepare direct buttons function is called I'll just show you wait there's nothing to show first we need to define the buttons right so let me just create a simple buttons uh, left right up down so up down on the left side of the screen uh, left right on the right side of the screen we simply need to call our prepare direct button direction button function two times so first the up button And I think it makes sense if we just make it a closer to the left border of the screen. Then we get the height of the screen divided by 2 and just add uh, 2, for example. Duplicate this function, change 1 to minus 1 because this is going to be our down arrow button. Uh, obviously, you need to place it at a different height, but the same uh, x coordinate and do something similar for our horizontal buttons only in this case our left button is going to attempt to move left obviously and we need to create the corresponding arrow in this case we just take the width um, of the game stage subtract 36 for example and divided by 2 minus 9 so it will be somewhere at the center of those two buttons like that duplicate the line change one to change mini minus 1 to 1 put the right arrow button it should be on the right side of our of our left arrow button so divide this value by 2 run the game let's see what's happened what happens what can we see so if we start the game you can see that we have one proper button and something is wrong so let me see what's going on uh, so technically Technically, everything should be working, but it doesn't. And why is that? Probably because I'm not assigning the values correctly. Let me see about left arrow button equals. Of course, we're not assigning down arrow button and then the root of all evil comes. Uh, left arrow right arrow up arrow and down arrow now we'll probably be missing only one button but it's still a step forward oh no everything is fine as you can see 
all buttons are shown properly. We can still move with the keyboard, but if you click the arrows, you can see that our character is moving. It's very impractical for the PC, but for Android devices, it's going to be okay, I think. Uh, right, so you can see that it's working. One thing that we need to do is to remove those buttons when the game ends. So, game screen on game end, add the line, control group, remove, so when the player dies, the buttons are removed. And uh, one thing that you need to prepare for the launch, open the Android manifest. Oh, okay, we have the orientation landscape, but make sure that there's a screen orientation because you want the screen to be horizontally shown. After that, you just choose Android and try uploading this game on your phone. In my case, you see I have the Android 5.1 device connected. And I think this concludes our today's tutorial. Thank you for watching. Uh, good luck programming it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on the email link below. Thank you. And Vladimir is out. Bye.